All right, we're just going to introduce how a barometer works and how you can solve these problems. So imagine you have a tray here that's going to be full of mercury, and this guy here is like an inverted test tube that's also full of mercury, but it's flipped upside down and you know partially submerged in the tray, and there's some sort of little vacuum space up here at the top. Well, how you get this vacuum space up here is what you do is you take out the take out the test tube and just kind of scoop it full of mercury and then put your thumb over it. And then once it's totally full and there's no air in it, what you do is you flip it upside down and put it in open side first and then remove your thumb. And then this level is going to drop to some point and then it will stop moving eventually. It will reach actually equilibrium. So first of all, don't actually do that with your hand. You don't want to be touching mercury. Um, but that's kind of the general idea of you know how to conceptually get this this vacuum up here. Now this isn't also a total vacuum, so first of all, let's imagine that we have this at atmospheric pressure. So on the outside here, PATM is going to be pushing down on the surface. And inside we're also going to have a vapor pressure here, so we'll call this PV. So this won't be a total vacuum, there will be a little bit of uh, mercury vapor floating around in here, but it won't be very much. But, um, now the reason why it gets to equilibrium is Remember in the previous videos we talked about how pressure at a given depth in a fluid will be the same no matter where you are. So imagine you have some point down here at red where this red dot is. Well, that's going to have the same pressure as you know this point or this point. You know, it's just uh, no matter what depth you're at, as long as it's the same depth, you will have the same pressure. So you can imagine that if you have this pressure here or this depth here that P atmosphere is acting on, well, that would be the same pressure here. And that would also be the same pressure right here. So with that, now what we can do is we can take an elementary force balance. If we know that the pressure right here is P atmosphere, maybe we'll, you know, we're looking at this one, this green one right here. So we're going to say that P atm is going to be equal to, well, we're looking at this column here. So remember in previous videos also we said, well, the way that we find the pressure at a given depth is just rho gh. So we have this is going to be h. Um, so we're going to have rho. Uh, we can even put a subscript on here for mercury times g times h. So we're going to have uh, the pressure right here is going to be equal to the atmospheric pressure, and it's also going to be equal to this rho gh plus the vapor pressure, plus p v. But it turns out that, you know, at room temperature and all of those things, this vapor pressure of mercury is actually going to be extremely small compared to atmospheric pressure, so we can actually just cross this out. Uh, it's not quite zero, but it uh, it is negligible. Negligible. So, this whole expression here uh, reduces to P atmosphere is just going to be equal to rho g h. Now we could use water, but we're going to have a barometer that's going to be like 30 feet tall. We don't want that uh, because mercury is a lot denser. We can have a much more compact one. Um, so here we have, yeah, we have this expression P atmosphere equals rho g h. And now what the problem will usually be stated as, you know, if you're given H, you can observe what H is or measure it with a ruler, then it'll say calculate what the atmospheric pressure is. Or the other way that this problem usually gets asked is, given atmospheric pressure, what will the height in millimeters be for this column of mercury? Alright, I'll see you in the next video and we'll do an example problem.